Hello everyone and welcome to the 8th Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can use an NS slider in our applications. So an NS slider is quite basic. Uh, you just simply grab a knob and you slide it either left or right. And if you slide it right, then you're probably increasing some value. And if you slide it to the left, you're probably decreasing the value. So um, if you want to look up kind of an example of this, if you have iPhoto on your Mac, which I think everyone probably does, then uh, you can go ahead and open that. And you'll see that at the bottom of iPhoto, there's a nice slider that um, adjusts the thumbnail sizes of your images. So if you slide it to the right, it makes your images larger. And if you slide it to the left, it makes your images smaller. So that's a basic implementation of a slider. You basically are changing some values as you slide the slider. So anyway, that's what we're going to be learning about in this tutorial. It's quite simple. And all this, this um, application is going to do is as we slide it, we're going to be updating a label to represent the integer value on our slider. So uh, just a basic implementation of a slider. So what I have set up so far in this class is garbage collections on. I've added a slider Objective-C class, uh, pretty simple. Uh, we all know how to do this by now, and if you don't, again, it's in previous tutorials. And I've also added my object of the slider class to my workbench. So that's pretty much uh, all we've really done so far. So now let's just add the elements that we want for this uh, tutorial. So we want a label, and that's just an NS text label, or NS text field, sorry. And so we got that, and now we also want a slider, and this is an NS slider to be more specific. So the top three, any of these top three sliders here are perfect for what we're trying to do. So just go ahead and drag this on. And we can go ahead and drag this out if we want and readjust it. So anyway, as you can see, we have our slider now. So let's look at some of the uh, few things that we can do with our slider. So go ahead and select your slider. And in the attributes inspector, you'll see quite a few things under our slider uh, section here. So we can change the style of our slider. And this might be surprising, but you can make your slider circular. So even though this doesn't really look like a slider, it's still considered an NS slider. So if you've ever used things like GarageBand, I think older versions of GarageBand used to have this anyway, but it's basically a knob that if you go left to right, it is like turning the dial. So it's similar to like if you had a guitar amp and you were adjusting the treble or the bass. It's kind of the idea of this circular slider. So that's how the circular slider works, but we're going to be mostly focusing on the linear one. So the linear one uh, is probably more familiar to people, and uh, has a few options or a few things that you can change. You can change the tip marks, uh, like tick marks just are little lines that or dashes that represent how far you are or whatever. So you can change whether they're above or below your slider. And to actually show the tick marks, you just put in some number of tick marks. So you can say 11. There we go, and now we have 11 tick marks on our slider. You can also set it so that only when you move the slider, it will only jump between these tick marks. So that means that, you know, if you're at 1, or if you're at 0, rather, and you set the tick marks to be 11, then you would be incrementing by 10 each time. So you go 0, 10, 20, etc., all the way to 100. So that's the idea of tick marks. They just kind of represent, um, it just, it won't fluidly move. It'll jump between different levels of tick marks, I guess you'd say. So anyway, uh, we're going to disable tick marks for this tutorial, though. And now we're back to our little circular slider. And you can also see that there's a minimum value and a maximum value, which are just, if you have the slider all the, way, all the way to the left, it will be 0, and all the way to the right will be 100 in this case. And again, you can change these values to whatever you want. So there's also the current value that it's at would be 50 in this case, which would put it right in the middle, as you can see. And you can also adjust this, and it will uh, change wherever the slider knob is. So anyway, that's the general idea of how a slider works. So anyway, let's get into the code now of actually programming what we want. So when we move this slider, what we want is this label to change to get the integer value of the slider. So wherever the slider is, we want to get its integer value on its scale. And then we are going to set the label to be equal to that value. So since we have Xcode 4, let's go ahead and use our assistant editor. 
And again, you can put this directly in code if you don't have Xcode 4. But anyway, since we have Xcode 4, we may as well try some new features. So go ahead and hit your assistant editor button right there. And you'll see that uh, we get our file right uh, below our interface builder. So if you don't have the correct file, you can go into the jump bar and select um, basically where this header file is. And it should give you all the header file options that you can use. So in this case, we want to use our slider.h, and we just double click it, or we just click it like that, and that's what we want to do. So now that we have our slider.h file open, this is the uh, new Objective C class that we added. Now we can freely add the elements that we want. So for this tutorial, um, we're going to start by setting uh, this value of our slider to some value to start. So we're going to do that in a wake from nib. And then we're also going to uh, set the label to be equal to whatever the slider is as it updates. So to do this, we were going to want to have an instance variable for our label, so we can change the label in our code. And we're also going to have an instance variable for our slider, so that we can change that in code as well. And we're also going to have an action, IB action, so that when our label, or not our label, when our slider is adjusted, our label will change as the slider's value changes. So let's go ahead and add these. So we want to drag our label down into our code, and we're adding an outlet, and we're just going to call this label. As you can see, all the types are fine. We have an NS text field. So we can go ahead and connect that. And now we can drag our little slider over here. We're just going to call it slider, and we can connect that as well. As you can see, it has the correct type. Go ahead and connect. And there we go. Now we have our NS text field called label and our slider called slider. So now we also want an IB action so that when this thing moves, we are updating our label's value. So let's go ahead and drag from your uh, slider down into your code and change your connection instead of outlet to action. And now uh, the name of this method is just going to be uh, slider change. And again, you can call this whatever you want, but I'm just calling it that for the sake of this tutorial. So now we have all the connections made and all the instance variables and everything that we want in our code. So now, of course, we just have to say to slider.m what we want to do with these different things. So again, slider.m is our implementation file, and this is where we implement all the different features that we're going to have. So again, like I said, we want awake from nib to set some default value when we start up our program here. So we're just going to say void uh, awake from nib. And in awake from nib, we're going to be setting our slider, and we want to set it to an integer value of something, so we're going to use set int value, and we're just going to give it a 25 to start here. And we're also going to set our label, and we're going to also set its int value, and you don't always have to use set string value for these, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is in a second, but just go ahead and say set int value. And we want to take the integer value of our slider. So just say slider int value, like so. And now our label is going to be set to whatever the value our slider is, which is obviously 25. So um, I just want to quickly cover where all these set int values and set string values and you know int value, string value, all these things come from. And they come from the NS control class. And just if you really want to get more information, I'd highly suggest going to your help menu and going to documentation and API reference. And then you can type in um, NS control. Just type it in and you'll see it brings up the NS control class and it gives you all these different methods. So essentially, all the Cocoa objects, or I shouldn't say all, but most of the Cocoa objects that you bring in, such as labels and sliders and uh, a bunch of different things, they all uh, stem from what is known as NS control. So NS control is a superclass of all of these different, you know, NS sliders, NS text fields, etc. And what NS control gives us is all these set int values and set string values and all those things. So generally, anytime you want to set some kind of integer value or a string value to any of your Cocoa buttons or you know whatever you're talking about you can generally use one of the NS control methods, which is what we're doing here. Set int value is from NS control, int value again is from NS control, and NS control has a bunch of other different methods in it as well. So highly suggest checking out NS control because you'll notice that most of the objects we use uh, stem from NS control, so we can use all of its methods. 
So that's just um, a nice little note. And yeah, again, I highly suggest looking that up just because it's a good reference. So with that out of the way, we can also, again, uh, this is in our slider change method. So this will update whenever our slider value is changed. So again, we want to be updating our label for this. So again, we're just going to say label set in value. And we're just going to be taking the slider value or int value. So there we go. Now we've got that all set. And now our program should work as intended. So let's go ahead and run this. And once it's done compiling, we get our little uh, window here. You can see that our set int value is working properly. We started at 25 and our slider is at the 25 spot. And now you'll notice that if I click to different areas on here, our slider adjusts and our label adjusts as well. But one thing you'll notice is that if I move the slider like this, the value isn't updating as I move the slider, which we kind of want to happen because it just makes it look nicer and you'll see that it doesn't actually update until I let go. So when I let go of the slider, then it updates, but not until then. So how can we change this? Well, we could do this in code, but we can also do this with Interface Builder, which I'm going to show you. So you can go back to your main menu.nib file, go ahead and click on your slider, and you'll notice under Control, and also I should point out that you can see that any of the attributes that you have here are actually coming from uh, the, the class hierarchy that it's in. So since our slider is inherent, it, sorry, our slider inherits from the NS control class, which inherits from NS view, you can kind of see that our attributes inspector is actually just kind of taking uh, the subviews from, or the, the, cl the class directory, I should say, of uh, basic, or the class hierarchy of all these different um, buttons or different objects that we put in. So you can see we have our slider, and then our su super class of that would be NS control. And as you can see, it gives us all the options that we can set uh, directly with NS control. So in NS control, there's actually an option to set uh, whether it will update continuously. So if we check the continuous button under our in our slider, you can see that um, now this will enable when the slider is moved, it will continuously send the slider or slider changed method or message to our slider class. So essentially when the slider is moved, it will continuously update or it will keep calling its slider changed method. So with that already set, we can go ahead and run this again. And again, all we did was just check on continuous. And now you can see that when we move the slider, the value is continuously changing as we move from one end to the other. And you can see the lowest value we have is zero and the highest is 100 like we set in Interface Builder. So anyway, that's basically uh, all I want to show you in this tutorial. Pretty simple, um, but it's an important thing to know. So anyway, that was uh, lesson eight. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave your questions in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate anyone who's clicked on the odd ad for me. It uh, really helps out. So anyway, uh, just if you have any questions again, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you next tutorial.